hello guys welcome back to our youtube channel so basically today we are continuing from where we left on the discussion on the law of succession so just to recap remember the law of succession is divided into two there's interstate succession whereby one dies without a will and there is tasted succession whereby one dies after leaving a valid will so in the case of someone passing away and there is no will as to how their property is going to devolve um, the law that is applicable is the law of interstate succession so the interstate succession is basically regulated by the interstate law of succession act 81 of 1987 which is read together with the reform of customary law of succession act of 2009 so it makes provision for the order of estate interstate succession so it gives the rules that are applicable say for example someone passes away they have two wives and they have children and the deceased parents are still alive so it gives us the rules as to how that person's property is going to devolve remember they are not leaving any will but at the same time the the, the property has to be divided so these rules guide us as to who gets what how much of it and everything so this is most important because now when it comes to law of interstate succession this is one of the most difficult aspects calculations it's one of the most te technical aspects and examiners love asking on this because this is one of the core elements of the of the of the law of interstate succession so today basically we are going to talk about the order of interstate succession so the order is actually premised on eight rules rule number one rule number two rule number three rule number four rule number five rule number six rule number seven and rule number eight and this is the first part of our discussion on the order of interstate succession because it's a bit too long so today we are only going to be discussing rule number one rule number two and rule number three so rule number one is regulated by section one one a of the interstate succession act so remember in the exam when you're making your calculations you have to write down the rule and the relevant section so when you say rule number one you give us the section and then you tell us what that rule talks about so we have rule number one which regulates a situation where someone passes away and they leave no descendants no children no grandchildren they only live a spouse or spouses so one dies and he leaves only his wife that's what rule number one talks about rule number two talks about that a situation whereby one dies and he or she leaves behind dependents descendants i mean but with no with no spouse or spouses so that is rule number two which is regulated by section 11b of the interstate law of succession and then we have rule number three which is now a situation where one passes away and he leaves behind his spouse or spouses and descendants so that's basically that so let's go let's uh de um, delve into our rules um now so the first rule that you're going to talk about is rule number one so guys make sure that you follow this you follow the discussion because now you have to look at the at the graph at the at the at the at the, at the screen so that you'd grasp 
you, you know these uh, these elements because this is one of the most technical aspects when it comes to law of succession. So rule number one is basically like I said, rule number one is regulated by section one one a of the Interstate uh, Succession Act. So now we have a situation whereby spouse, yeah, the deceased has got a spouse or spouses, and they have no descendants. So here's the thing: in green we have Romeo with the deceased, and he leaves behind. He has a brother and a spouse, and there are no descendants. Terence, the brother, is not is not a descendant, so they are on the same level. You understand? So. The ones that are here, ascendants, we are not going to be talking about them because for now we are talking about descendants. Descendants are Romeo's children and grandchildren. So in a situation whereby the deceased Romeo dies and he leaves only Juliet without any descendants, without any children, it means the spouse will inherit the entire estate. So in this case, Juliet will inherit, will inherit the entire estate because she doesn't have anyone else to share with. That's basically a rule number one. It's quite straightforward. And um, in a situation where Romeo passes away, and but he has two wives, wife number one and wife number two, or spouse number one, spouse number two, what happens? Romeo's estate is now divided into two so that Emily, spouse number one, gets half. Juliet, the spouse number two, gets a half. So estate must be divided equally among all the spouses. Emily gets a half. Juliet gets a half. If they were uh, three spouses, it's going to be divided by, divided by three. If there were four spouses, so it, it was going to be divided by 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 four. So now we move on to rule number two. Rule number two is a situation where there are descendants, but there are no spouses. So Romeo passes away. His wife passed away before him. So he leaves behind children. He leaves behind. Child number one, Beth, child number two, Oliver, and child number three, Miranda. But now, Beth actually dies before Romeo. So when Romeo passes away, we have two children, Oliver and Miranda, and they are grandchildren here. Yeah. So what happens? It means now the descendants, that is these, um, Oliver, Miranda, Winnie, and Lisa, as the descendants, they inherit the entire estate equally and re by, by representation. So, um, okay, I'm sorry about that. So, by that, it means um, there are three of them, right? So, it's Oliver, it's, it's, three, it's, it's three representations. We have Oliver, we have Miranda, and we have this representation, which is combined, which is two. You understand? Then it means it's going to be three of them. Oliver, Miranda, and then Winnie and Lisa, they are put together. They are combined to make one. So it's going to be divided. The entire estate is going to be divided by three. So it means pay strips. It means um, Oliver is going to get one third of the estate. Miranda is going to get one third of the estate. The other one third is coming to Winnie and Lisa. So Winnie and Lisa are going to share this one third. It means that now Winnie gets 160 and Lisa gets 160. Just like that. Pastry pest. I guess it's quite straightforward. So Winnie and Lisa, they get one one sixth. Oliver gets one third. 
and Miranda gets one third. This is a bit technical, hence I'm saying you guys should be able to concentrate on the screen so that you would follow the, the argument. So now that is rule number two, which is regulated by section 11B of the Interstate Succession Act. Now we move to rule number three. Now, the higher you go with the rules, the more technical it becomes. So guys, you have to be focused, especially on this one. This one is a very, very technical one. Um, so we have uh, Romeo who is deceased, and we have Brett who dies be before Romeo, so he's not, he, he, she's not going to be part of the equation. We have Oliver, we have Miranda, and Romeo, when he dies, he leaves behind a wife. So we have a situation where there's, there's a wife, Juliet, and their descendants, Oliver and Miranda, and Winnie and Lisa as the descendants. And the estate is 300,000 worth. So how does it devolve now? How is it calculated? So now you calculate the value of Romeo's estate, which is 600,000. And then you divide it by two, which is 300,000, right? Um, this means that the surviving spouse inherits whichever is the greater of a child's portion of an amount that is from time to time published in the um, government gazette. Descendants inherit the residue of the estate. So the first thing is to determine how much Juliet at the spouse gets before we even start dividing everything. So the surviving spouse gets either 250 or more. You understand? If it's less, it gets to 250. If it's more, it's, she's going to get the, 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 bigger, the bigger portion. So here we have to calculate the value of Romeo's estate, which is 600. So we divided it by two. Which is a, it's a joint estate. Remember, they were, they were, they were married in, in, in compared three uh, by two. You know? So Juliet gets her portion of the joint estate, which she's entitled to which she's not supposed to be sharing with anybody. You understand? So we take away the joint estate. If it was not a joint estate, we were not going to divide it by two. But now that they were married in community of property, it means it has to be divided first. So Juliet gets her portion of 300,000, and then we, are remain, then we remain with 300,000. That is now the amount that is up for grabs. Then now we calculate the child's portion, which is number of strippers, which is three, uh, plus one, the spouse, which is equals to four. So we divide 300,000 by four to make 700,000, 75,000. So which one is more, 75,000 or 250? 250,000 is more. Therefore, Juliet will inherit 250,000. Uh, now we calculate the residue of the estate, which is 300,000. Minus 250,000 that went to Juliet, we are, we are remained with 50,000. 50,000 is now the amount that is going to go to the descendants, which are Oliver, Miranda, and, and Winnie and Lisa. So the 50,000 is divided by three, which gives us 16,666.66. And meaning that Winnie and Lisa, they are going, uh, Oliver, um, uh, Oliver and Miranda are going to get 16,666 each. And then the rest of the amount is going to be, the change is going to be shared between Winnie and Lisa, which means each one gets 8,333. So this is a very, very technical. And I hope that you guys are, 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 are going to be able to interpret the, the information. Hence, I gave this slide. So that is going to be able for you. But if ever you have any questions, you can put questions on the comment section and then we'll help where we'll be able to help. So that is all for today's session. We are going to continue um, in, our next, um, in our next session where we'll be now dealing with rules um, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So thank you guys for listening and please remember to subscribe. Tell your friends to tell their friends that this is a very helpful channel. Thank you very much and take care.